That's right. They're going home too. They're upset because the judge basically said, you know, the circumstances, this young man's never been in trouble. He has no kind of record. He doesn't even have anybody that's aggravated with him that can, you know, bring up a charge that would stick. And he said, wouldn't it be better just to ask him, you know, can you stay away from those folk for a year? You know, just to demonstrate whether or not you've got some kind of vendetta against them. And he said, yes, Your Honor, we can do that. Okay. All right. I release you. And here's a piece of advice or here's a invitation. He said, I'll be interested in how this turns out. And he said, you know, you can come in and record my court anytime. And so that was him actually saying, you know, the letter of the law says this, but I have the right to look at the circumstances and here's the spirit of the law. This is how we're going to um, parse this out. This is extremely important. You might say, I've never heard anybody talk like this. Well, I'm simply putting it out there for you. We're going to let the law and the prophets actually talk about this. Now, remember what we said. We were talking about Matthew 7, 1 and 2. Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. It's impossible that you're going to be in a position where you ne you're not going to be in a position where you never judge. He's giving you information that should help you to monitor yourself, help you to rein yourself in. Because, you know, when we get down to this, if you don't forgive men their trespasses, God's not going to forgive you. It's going to be a so and an as. As you do, so it will be done to you. And then, therefore, all things whatsoever you would do, would that men do to you, you even do ye even so unto them, for this is the law and prophets. So here we are. We're actually looking at, well, how does this, you know, really when you talk about this, how does this play out? Well, this is an account, and I just have to basically bring you up on, on the front of it. You're probably going to know it because it's a very well-known instance. It actually is the, uh, this would be the judiciary part of King David and the things that went on between himself and one of his very, very loyal subjects named Uriah, whose wife's name was Bathsheba. And as you know, David ended up having a relationship with Bathsheba. And the circumstances surrounding all of that, that brings us up to 2 Samuel chapter 12, the circumstance end up being, or the details of the case ends up being that David saw her in a kind of a compromising situation where he decided that he just had to have her. He ends up bringing her in, having her uh, summoned, and she comes in. They uh, have a, a carnal relationship, and she becomes pregnant. Well, now you've got one of your loyal subjects who you've impregnated his wife. Well, they happen to be out fighting a war. Oh, man. Is that how this went? They're out fighting a war. And so David brings Uriah home and he tries to work this over in such a way that Uriah is basically having a relation with her at the same time, around the same time. So if she ends up having a baby, it'd just be the case that Uriah came home on leave. And that's how this thing goes. But Uriah is not going to do that. Everybody.